folks. This is Dr. Emily Scherning with American Resiliency. You might recall we recently postulated that there are three observable Earth system signals to check out if you're concerned about AMOC collapse. Sea surface temperatures, Arctic ice increases, and cool temp anomalies over Northern Europe. It's time for a checkup. If you keep an eye on the ocean, you're probably aware the ocean is mad. And as you can see here, current sea surface temperatures are stupid. They are hottest still observed by a significant margin. If we look at one of our other points to watch here on Zach's page, we notice that we are getting towards suspiciously high levels of Arctic ice. For northern polar ice to be doing so well, while sea surface temperatures are getting higher and higher, probably we ought to be creeped out. That's our third indicator to watch for signs of AMOC collapse. It is cool temp anomalies hitting Europe. As we see here, where we're looking at two meter surface temperature anomalies. This here, it's not enough to go full bananas, but I've been watching this guy over the last few days. It's really forming up. It's forming up in the right region. I think we got to keep an eye on it. I'm very suspicious of this blob. It's worth noting too that like, there's so many anomalies on this map. Like, look at this, look at the key. This is anomalies, this is a raw temperature. This blue is minus 10, this red is plus 10. There's like way more energetic instability in this temperature map than I would like to see in a healthy earth system. Looking at these conditions, like how I would look at vital signs on a person I was giving first aid. My first thought would be that I need to take these vitals again because I must have screwed up. My second thought would be, something's really wrong with this person. This person has a serious problem. Stuff is getting wonky, folks. There's no two ways about it. On this channel, I share risk and resilience potential for U.S. locations at 2C. It's pretty clear we need to be ready to deal with 2C like this summer. If you're curious about 3C destinations, you can check out my destinations region videos. And if you're the kind of maniac who wants to stay in the game of 4C, which that is my kind of maniac, you want the portions of the Prairie Pothole region I highlight in Prairie Town Dreaming, where we have the best potential to preserve the greatest terrestrial biodiversity through this time of change. I'd like to mention an AR community member and frequent commenter, Corey. She came up with a good name for my kind of maniac. She's calling us bottleneckers. I kind of love it. Corey, I think you hit the vibe just right there. And now the truly horrible thing though about this video is that we're not yet done looking at disturbing things. I want to share some more alarming news about the ocean thanks to a viewer question. Thanks, Astro 8, for sending me down this horrifying rabbit hole. Astro 8 asked about the North Pacific Gyre, more specifically the Kuroshio current weakening and the blobs of hot water we've seen there, especially over the last few months off the coast of Japan. This should intrigue me because I also noticed those anomalous signals, but you know how it goes. I haven't seen anyone else ever really talking about them, so I figured it maybe it wasn't that noteworthy. Not an ocean expert by any stretch of the word. This project is leading me down some learning journeys that I did not expect and I do not like. Anyway, Astro Ape specific question. Would we expect greater northern hemispheric cooling if both the AMOC and North Pacific gyre collapsed at roughly the same time? I was interested in this question because not only had I noticed that visual anomaly pattern that Astro Ape notes, I'd never heard of the North Pacific gyre and I like learning new things. So I started poking at it, and I'm willing to bet that most of you folks also haven't heard of the North Pacific Gyre. The Woods Hole Institute, which like, I know enough about oceans to know that if you need an ocean expert, you can go to Woods Hole Institute, says that the North Pacific Gyre is one of the most like under-described ocean systems, and that its oscillations have only been recently described. Why don't you know? As part of this, uh, this system and its oscillations only being recently described, there's limited literature on what happens when it gets weird. But what there is, is alarming. Let's look at a paper. So this is the best recent research paper that I could find by Zhao et al. in Geophysical Research Letters. We're talking about that you do get linked collapse related to AMOC collapse because AMOC collapse is related to glacial termination. And from the very first line of this abstract, I was like, oh dear, that sounds bad. I don't want carbon release from the North Pacific. And this is, it's nice. There's a nice plain language summary you can read here if you want to freak yourself out, where it is apparently clear over the last 400 KA that this North Pacific gyre does kind of like to go down when everything else is getting weird. 
and it responds by burping up a lot of CO2, which it may have occurred to you, we already have kind of a too much CO2 situation. So this is some really bad news. We wanted to learn more about it. You might notice this paper is not highly cited. Look down in the references. And there, you know, it's a well-referenced paper. It's a well-written paper. Zhao et al., I admire your work. When we note that it's not highly cited, when we note that not many of the references deal with Pacific gyre oscillation, it's because this is an understudied, under-researched topic. It looked to me like they did a very thorough literature comb, and they only found like six additional papers that they put into this analysis. So very low level of exploration on this in the research world, from what I could tell. Thanks, Zhao et al., for getting us what you could. Folks, this really stinks. I feel, though, like it helps me build up an understanding of what we're going into. Something, if we look at the incoming data, is coming down the pipe pretty fast. And you know, when I started this project in 2021, there were a lot of signs that we were on track for the models, for the models facing 2050. There were plenty of signs in Earth systems that we were, you know, proceeding on sort of a projected change pathway. But in 2023, in March of 2023, we really jumped the shark. You know, all of the signs are coming in super weird since then. And it looks like we're heading into a wave of weird impacts, unexpected, understudied impacts. And I do think we're going to run into some serious limits about our ability to predict what happens next. I know this is hard for some folks to accept, but we don't know everything. Like with the North Pacific Gyre, our recent and not completely characterized system. So maybe you ask, where do we go from here? Things are going to get really weird and hard pretty fast. We're in a much weirder place in Earth's climate systems this March than we were last March. And this is how it makes me feel, because, you know, our emotional reactions to this stuff matter. When I look at this kind of stuff, it makes me very grateful that I started making non-mainstream life choices when I did in 2020. Our family, we got to a low cost of living area. We dramatically lowered our monthly expenses. We accepted we weren't going to need to worry that much about retirement. That series of life choices lets my husband and I do more stuff we want and spend more time with people we love. I have a deep value around preserving biodiversity. We're in a place where the work of our hands has more potential to endure than in other places. Many places are wonderful, to be sure. Everyone wants to save the coral reefs, but every dollar you put into saving the prairie has staying power. Every dollar you put into coral reefs, I wouldn't call it foolish, I'd call it a prayer. It's, you know, only prayers are going to save the warm water reefs now. The work we do is important, but the conditions are so hard, and the conditions will allow the prairie to keep going for a long time. Getting weird with it. Making the life we wanted, I'm not glad I did it because I feel so confident my family is going to thrive through all these changes to our biosphere. I don't have some fantasy where we're going to be doing snacks and crafts in our island of perfect stability while the world burns. I'm glad I did it because getting weird with it gave me more freedom. It let me do more good things, things that felt good in my body, things that helped nurture biodiversity, things that made my community and the people I care about stronger and happier. I'm in a pretty resilient situation now, which I value, but I don't value it just because of looking towards the future. I value it because from 2020 until now, I could have spent that in my old life where every thought I got to have was paid for. It was important to have new clothes every season or I wouldn't get promoted because I didn't look like I wanted to be promoted. It was important to get a new car because we were not projecting an image of success. And I missed a lot of time with my family. And a lot of the time when I was with people I cared about, I was so exhausted and stressed about things that were generating value for other people. I couldn't really be present in my own life. There are other paths. I know that many people are, are trapped in cycles that feel very painful for them. Getting weird with it, following through on your dreams that take you off the beaten path, there's no better time than now. There's not gonna be a better opportunity. This is a great time to live the life you want now. Our society, it's designed to maximize value extraction. Getting weird with it, let me keep more of the value of my life for myself and for my community. You deserve to. You deserve to get beauty and value out of your life now. Not to bank everything for retirement. We have, shall we say, limited assurances about the future. That's always true. It's always true. We're all mortal beings. 
but this limited assurance, it's, it's extra true now, right? I'm sorry if I freaked you out with this video. I don't know for sure how soon everything is gonna get real weird. I don't think anyone does, but we can see these earth system health checks are going bad and we keep identifying new major problems. It's like if you had a patient come in for strep throat and then you found incidental liver cancer. And then it also turns out they're in withdrawal from benzos. There's like no simple fix there. We're gonna have to go through something big is what these system checks seem to indicate. And you know, people with federal and state funding, people with big institutional funding, they can't talk like this. They need more peer review. They need a higher level of certainty. They need to not rock the boat. I'm sure there are folks out there who could do this better than me, who could explain this better than me, you know? I'm just doing my best here. I wanna give you the best read I can on a rapidly developing situation. Best word of advice that I feel like I can give you is to get away from the ocean because the ocean is mad and it needs some space. This whole earth system situation, at this point, even if we go into La Nina, which we are likely to do, the pattern of anomalies is so big. I don't think La Nina is gonna like settle it down. I think it's just gonna get weird in a different way. Things are going to get weird. You gotta make the life you want to live. Get in the place you wanna be. Let's get ready. Folks, thanks for watching and thanks for joining us. AR has recently passed a milestone. We've reached more than 100,000 people in America with detailed local climate information. And it's thanks to the incredible support of the AR community. There are so many folks committing their financial resources, their energy, their time to helping this information get out there. I'm so grateful to all of you. And I'm so glad that we're doing this together. Thanks for being there with me. I'm going to keep an eye on the news. I'm going to keep an eye on high consensus science. I'm going to try and get you what you need as we go through this together.